Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Cleaning and Cocktails. Uh, super excited today as you are starting to see, if you're looking to the left, to the right, we are in a our always improving studio here at the office. Uh, and I'm super stoked for the guests that I have on, on the show today. But first off, you guys know what we're talking about, right? People stories, the industry, cleaning, how to make it fun, how to empower the space and how to share people's stories that normally uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't hear about, right? So today, I have the pleasure of introducing Hannah and Carolyn Ariano. Ariano. Ariano, uh, out of New Jersey. So first off, before the girls start talking about themselves here, is let me, let me thank you guys, because what you guys don't know here, what you'll know now, is they traveled from New Jersey to here to you know walk around our space, get to know a little bit about how we operate, and, and learn to improve their business and grow their business. And I say thank you because that's a, uh, it's not only an investment of time, but it's an investment of money. It's an investment of, you guys have work back in New Jersey, I'm assuming, right? Where oh, yeah. <laughs> to be here, uh, you're you're taking time away from your family and, and work. So thank you. I appreciate you guys being here. I'm super stoked. This is a sister duo. You guys know I love talking about family. So without further more, Carolyn, take it away. As far as, you know, introduce, uh, what we always start with is, how the hell did you guys get into cleaning? because nobody goes to school to graduate to say, I'm gonna open a cleaning company. Absolutely. Um, so I did go to school for business uh, management. I always knew that I wanted to run a business. Uh, growing up in a family of entrepreneurs, our father um, has his own mechanic shop. Our grandparents came to this country and opened their own restaurant um, and later on their own church. Uh, so I always knew I wanted to be a business owner and just do my own thing and be successful at it. Um, but I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do or what kind of space I wanted to be in. Um, so after four years of college, I came out, still didn't have an idea of what I wanted to do. Um, always had a love for cleaning, a little bit of OCD, um, if you ask anybody. I feel like a trait of cleaning <laughs> business owners is OCD. There's, there's. Yeah, I, like, I get like a kick out to, of it. Like, yeah, yeah I, I, can't, I can't work from home because I'll be cleaning my house. That's kind of <laughs> how it goes. Um, but cleaning always, uh, it always made me feel good. Like the adrenaline rush, um, people like to work out. Like my working out was cleaning. Um, so fresh out of college, still had no idea what I wanted to do, um, but was always good at cleaning and organizing and help helping other people in their homes or their businesses. Um, so one day Hannah and myself, uh, along with one of her, her friends, we helped my mentor, um, move warehouses and before we did that we actually had to help clean and organize and pack all their belongings in order to um, to make the move and it was during that three-day period that everyone that he had working for his company was kind of just complimenting us telling us you know what a great job we did uh, we're doing and um, that same week I also had a couple of my father's employees uh, mention to me about hey you know you should really open a business you do so great and you you know you enjoy it and then um, I think I had like a third family member say something about it. So three is a magic number. Yeah definitely <laughs> and at that time Hannah and I were actually uh, launching our first uh, failed business <laughs> hey. into party planning. Um, That's the step to get to the next step. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Again, we had no idea what we were doing, but uh, we went in, um, you know, together on the party planning. It didn't work out well. And um, after being told three times in a week uh, that we should start our own cleaning company, I was like, you know what? Maybe we should start our own cleaning company. Um, so Hannah and I started to do a little bit of research um, as far as like pricing goes. Um, you know, because we had no idea, like, how do you even price a house? Um, so we called around to other big uh, companies, kind of got a price range and understanding of like the hourly rate. Um, and with little to no money, <laughs> we went to the dollar store on our first trip and bought brooms, um, the cheapest glass cleaner you can think of. I've been there many times. Oh to, man. Because it's quantity. <laughs> at that point at the dollar store, it's like, let me get 10 or 20 of everything. Exactly. And you get the stockpile. Exactly. And um, no so shame we, in the Dollar Tree. No, no, no shame. shame at all. That's how we started. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we got our, you know, our products from the Dollar Tree, um, landed our first customer. She actually happened to be a realtor. So we got pretty damn lucky um, on that first um, customer of ours. She loved how we cleaned. Uh, we had no idea what we were doing, but the but fact you guys were doing it together. Yes, yeah, so we were doing it together. Yeah. We were learning together from the beginning, everything. Um, so, so real quick to take a step back on. All right. So you guys did this together, but 
Did you guys go to school together, Hannah? Did you guys go, like, how, where did the, you guys are sisters, mm-hmm. obviously, but like, where, where did it come to, you guys both were speaking to each other so to say, let's do it together? What it actually was, was I was just finishing up um, my bachelor's degree and Hannah was just finishing up high school. You know, now she was being pressured by college and I had went to college for business and I knew that was going to be a big, you know, waste of money just because it doesn't set you up for what you want to do. Mm-hmm. So, um. So yeah, I was like, hey, you know, let's start a business. And she was like, okay, I want to work, you know, right out of high school. So um, we started researching uh, the cleaning industry in our area. And um, while she was actually still attending high school, um, she'd come out of, from high school, catch a train, meet me at our office. And from about 3 p.m. to no joke, about three o'clock a.m. every day, we would grind. That's awesome. Um, Kudos. Yeah, Kudos. lots Hannah, of Red Bull. Thank you. I gotta say, like that's nineteen years old. I didn't know what I, I did yeah. not know what I wanted to do. But I'd say, you know, thanks to you too for you guys doing this together. Where, I mean, if you weren't there, she wouldn't have. She, she you're an entrepreneurship already. Like, right. Think about how awesome that is. Still in high school, she was actually she was in her last year working um, on the business and um, it was just really cool because she'd just leave class, catch the train, meet me, and then we would just start grinding um hannah was really intelligent um when it came down to learning just about anything she would soak it in so right from the beginning i knew hannah was going to be our marketing Mm -hmm. um because i'm good with the customer service dealing with customers i've had so many years of experience in customer service working for my father yeah um, working for other people people's companies dealing uh, with big accounts and things like that so that really set me up uh as far as the customer service side of things um I've also bartended on and off. So I've dealt with all kinds of people. Yeah, Um, personalities. Yeah, different personalities. I was, I was, uh, (laughs) I I used to, I don't know if I, I think I shared this before. Uh, I did security for the first four years. I was doing security at the bar. So yeah, like work all night, come back in the morning, work in the morning, daytime, at night, go to the bar, work. But that helps you know how to interact with people. Oh, 100%. You know, it really does because mm-hmm. you got you, you don't know what kind of personality you have no. coming to order a drink. So, that, man, that's you guys are grinding. Yeah, uh, we did. We, grind, uh, we so were grinding for a while. So three years too, right? Is that what you guys told me before? Yeah, this we're coming up on year? three. Okay. Um, so we did our research. We you know got went to the dollar store, got our first customer. Uh, she happened to be a realtor. She loved our work. Um, just started referring us out. Hannah started and everything's to learn. residential. Everything was residential. First. Correct. Right, okay. um, I was always told, you know, get into commercial, get into commercial, but not knowing the systems or how to clean a house properly. Um, I just wanted to do houses. Um, so we did that. We jumped into residential. Hannah was learning mar- the marketing side of things, Google ads, Instagram, um, Facebook, Google My Business, you name it. And um, So Hannah, that's what you're handling that marketing side? Correct. So Google, so that's intriguing because I still don't know how to handle Google ads and all that stuff. I feel like that is a... That's a profession in itself. Oh, absolutely. Right? Like, did you know that coming out of high school? Or? No, I had to take Google classes. You took the classes? Now, did you do that because you're in this business or you just did that on, on your own? Um, primarily because of the business. Mm-hmm. I knew it would get us more customers. Not, well, again, kudos, man. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's, that's hustle to know. You know, again, you guys are young and this is a tough industry, right? I mean, you guys, to me, already going on year three, I'll give you some good some relative stats or industry stats over, I think it's 36,000 cleaning companies start every year, right? With COVID last year, that number could be way up. Everybody in the woodwork Mm -hmm. was coming out to open a cleaning company last year, but on average 36,000. I say that because I think it's like 56 or 58% don't even make it past the first year because it's like, think about you're doing marketing, you're doing, uh, you know, website stuff, right? Probably doing things on, on all the social media, you're handling, I would say, I think you told me invoicing. The invoicing, customer service. Customer service Those are billing. many hats mm-hmm. that we wear as business owners. Not that we want to, right? Because there's always probably somebody better that can do some of the things that you're doing that you just do because you have to. Right. But I, 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 this is why I, I tell everybody, like sisters, cousins, brothers, family, it, it's a, it makes or breaks you when you're, especially in business, because it's if you're doing it by yourself, it's lonesome. Oh yeah, absolutely. I know for a fact, like I wouldn't have been able to do it without Hannah. Yeah. I still couldn't. Likewise. No, yeah. that's why I say, yeah, my, my, my cousin, my wife and my family, like I, I wanted to quit. Mm-hmm. Like I, I was doing this as a side hustle. It was mm-hmm. always like, 
this is good. I'll leave it for the family and I'll go find some. I literally was always interviewing the first couple of years. Like I was trying to get another job. Mm -hmm. The minute I stopped, it was like, I'm all in, mm -hmm. you know, like you dedicate your time. Now you guys have each other's back. Yeah. Right? Anybody, any other Definitely. family members or is yes. it just you guys? Um, so we actually have two um, family members that do work with us. Uh, they've been with us from the beginning and um, they're a huge help, of course. Oh, um, so you have four, four family members. In they're there, out right? on the field every day, um, making sure everything's getting done. Uh, now they're training our new employees and they know that, you know, this is going to, they, they know there's a bigger picture. No. So, and the keep fact that- Keep that in mind. Yeah. Always keep that, because th that's the, the biggest driver is to always know what you guys are shooting for. Because if everybody worries about like the now, mm -hmm. the now is not always great. No, it's, it's not. Always, and know, it's, like, it's rough at times. Yeah, a complaint in the morning will screw your day up. <laughs> the fact that they've stuck it out with us and they like, they believed in us. So that it was another big factor mm -hmm. to push us even more because they're like, listen, we know we're only going to make $300 a week for a while. <laughs> But we also know that eventually, you know, we're not going to be cleaning. We're going to be managing. And there you go. They just had so much faith in us and believed in us. And I mean, it, it's a huge help having that support and people backing you up when you're just starting out and have nothing. Yeah. I mean, it's, talking it's a, about bank accounts going negative, oh, not yes, getting yes. paid some we're weeks. Talk about that. We're gonna talk. All right. Um, so let's talk about Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. I always forget to, because again, not that everything's sunshine and rainbows, but I, in the episodes, like we talk so much about all the the good mm -hmm. and the positive, right? Or to Garen in the last episode that you know you guys will see in love, he re we reminded each other. Let's talk about like that moment, that bad moment. I don't know if you guys saw the episode I did with my with Marley where we got our credit card de declined for mm -hmm. two a pack of gum. Yes, I did see that. That's episode. bad, right? Uh, what did you guys have those moments? Were oh they, yeah, we had like, plenty of those. Moments. Give me some of those. What are the? Give me, well, Hannah, mean, give me one, and then Carolyn, give me one. Oh, I can tell you that there have been weeks. Um, you know, we just didn't get paid. We didn't get paid, or if we did, it was like a hundred bucks. Um, and not because we didn't have the money, although there were times for that, but because we were trying to invest in buying better equipment, getting rid of the brooms. Um, I remember. The first time I had seen a protein backpack uh, when we first started out, and it was about four hundred dollars. Yeah, those aren't cheap. And I remember telling Hannah, like, "We need this. Like, we need this." And I was just thinking, like, "I can't wait till we have one." And now we have like twenty of them. Oh, it's dude, insane. Yeah. Like, but um, twenty yeah. of them. All right. Yeah, nice. <laughs> we nice. love those things. Oh no, they're good. Yeah. <laughs> they're great. Um, but yeah, there, I mean, things are rough. Like I said, we stood up till three o'clock in the morning, pounding Red Bulls, learning how to do Google ads, learning how to market, learning who our competitors were, um, reading books on cleaning, uh, watching YouTube videos on cleaning. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's a lot of rough times and uh, plenty of times that we've both wanted to quit oh, yeah. where she'll be like, I just can't deal with the stress or I'll be like, I can't deal with not getting paid. <laughs> It's the worst. Yeah. It's the worst. But we always like, you know, we support each other and we have our moments and then we just pick it back up. And then we realize, you know, we have gotten so far. Um, and within that first year, actually, uh, Hannah and I broke, I think, over like 300,000. Damn. Well, cheers. In to the first that. year. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Air cheer. Air, Air cheer. cheer. <laughs> But um, that was like a pivotal moment when I was like checking our, our stripe 300, account. 300,000 the first year. Yeah. 80,000 for me. I mean, that's Dude, crazy. That is awesome. Um, 300,000? <laughs> yeah, Ooh. I mean, cleaning houses. And I mean, we were driving everywhere, though. Um, Pennsylvania. You, so were you guys, it, between you four that mm -hmm. first year? Well, so for the first eight months, it was just Hannah and myself okay. doing everything. And then we realized that we needed, in order to scale the business, then we needed more people. that's when the other people. two family members yep, came on. They came on board. And then they gave us some, some time to, you know, do other work. And then we just started hiring. Yeah, because um, you guys, are you noticing now and... Again, it's you know, in some situations this is this doesn't happen and people get lucky and mm -hmm. they don't have to be in the business as much. But did you notice that you guys doing the cleaning, buying supplies, worrying about invoicing, doing the marketing, doing the selling? I mean, share with people like how crucial that was for you guys now that not that you're taking a step away on anything, but that you can step away to let mm -hmm. others help because you did. Oh everything. yeah, super crucial. I mean, I'm a control freak in the sense that um I was afraid of anyone else answering the phone or booking a, a job. And um, when we had those two family members come on board, I was able to, you know, give delegate some of my work to Hannah. And then 
of course you get a new set of tasks that come on oh, the work i mean you get you hire someone for marketing you're right. still doing invoicing you hire yeah. somebody for invoicing now you're doing something else yeah. but um yeah it's very important because you'll never be able to grow the business if you're cleaning buying supplies invoicing dealing with the customers um i can tell you that if i'm cleaning still to this day we have to go out and clean I don't want to answer the phone. I don't want to mm. talk to anybody. I'm cleaning. Yeah. And you lose a lot of business like that. Yeah, especially I got because you guys are predominantly residential still. Yes. Commercials coming on board. Mm -hmm. But residential, I mean, yeah, it's they can pick anybody, right? So if you don't answer that phone or answer that message from the website or the lead, mm -hmm. It's gone. Yeah, they're going right. on. They're they're not waiting for you to call them back. They're calling the next cleaning company on the list, yeah. pretty much. And how competitive is is New Jersey? It's pretty competitive yeah. because there are a lot of Craigslist cleaners. Um, you know, people that will come clean your house for ninety dollars, um, but they don't have insurance. They're not bonded if they mess up or break up a t. You know, break your TV. Um, you're not covered for that. But it's very competitive. So what we do is we market to um, larger homes, uh, very wealthy. Uh, towns in New Jersey. So Homedale, Hazlitt, we're talking like five, six bedroom, seven bathroom Because homes. you know, like what the bang for the buck, right? Like, exactly. like you know you're going to staff a three, four person team or whatever. I, again, I don't know how many mm -hmm. team members it takes to clean that, but it's it's worth the effort of assigning Oh yeah, absolutely. Team, right? Okay. So we'll go for like the big homes. Um, and then we were doing a lot of work in Manhattan. So we were banging out like apartments for like $200 a pop. We do like three, four a day. Okay. Um, but yeah, we just. And you I guys mean, said you're not near Brooklyn, right? Uh, we're about like 45 minutes from Brooklyn. Okay. Yeah. Because I got work in Brooklyn. Remember we're not we, that far from yeah, Brooklyn. Okay, okay, we got to talk. We, we visit talk. absolutely. Yeah. So but, Hannah, what about uh, social media, the marketing part? I mean, um, you just really have to be consistent. Um, constantly posting, you have to be on top, especially Google My Business. That's where we generate most of our customers. Mm -hmm. um, Believe it or not, we get a lot of customers without spending in ads. Um, by just getting reviews, we, we're always on top. So I'm always making sure that we're on top. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's like my job. That's the job. Right? Yeah. Like, uh, reviews are key. It's yeah, crucial. definitely. Like if you Google or that Google business, like if you do it within the map, because everything's off the the location of where your address is, right? Correct. Uh, if you don't show up at the top, I mean, no, think I'm about when you're going. Like, I, I always say this to, to people when they're like, Rick, why is Google business so important or why are reviews? When you're hungry, where do you go? And if you see somebody that has 1,300 reviews or 10, where are you going to eat? 1,300. 1,300 reviews. Absolutely, yeah. So it's, it's just, it's habit. It's people's habit to choose and, and feel like, what do you call it? Like, it's like follow the pack or like, what is everybody else doing? Okay, yeah. I'm going to do that. I mean, most of the phone calls are our new customers. Right off the bat, I'll ask them, um, you know, where did you hear us? Or why did you go with us? And they'll be like, you have the most reviews. You have the best reviews. If perfection actually isn't great, mm -hmm. right? For me, for I got take that back. Perfection is always great, but when we were at like fifty five stars, all five, mm -hmm. we had people say, "Oh, you guys are you know you're you're making those up." Mm -hmm. You know they don't they don't count. We got a one star, turned that one into a five. Got another one star, turned that back into a five. So I learned like actually that keeps you on your toes. Yeah, you know, absolutely. It, it keeps you on your toes, but. Like you were gonna, you know, leading to is there. There are those people that just, you know, I don't for not. I, I remember we got a one star one time mm -hmm. when we didn't answer the phone. Oh, mm, that we actually too. we have one like, of those. Yeah, I was like, wait, wait what, somebody didn't get their that? quote fast enough because <laughs> yeah. we were busy cleaning and we got a one star review. Never met the lady. <laughs> didn't it's even like, give like, her a price. Like, so that's why you got to take it with a grain of salt, right? But. Yeah, I was like, I was baffled. I was like, well, <sighs> how do we turn that around? There's no more to how turn How do you around. get a one-star review for something, that, a service that you haven't had? It's insane. But um, yes, reviews are super important. Um, Hannah works a lot on the social media. She's consistent, Instagram, Facebook. When nobody was liking any of our stuff, we still posted two, three times a day. Um, and then we got traction. I yeah. mean, people see it, people repost. It takes time. It does, no, right? it does take time. Because it's like when you guys are doing it, Hannah, right? Like. It's it's a story. That's mm -hmm. what I say. You guys are building a brand story on, you know, I call you guys a sister duo. I see that both of you guys, you know, post a lot of the, you know, not not even the same stuff. So like you're enhancing the image of the company solo. Those are the things that I'm I'm trying to help the the industry understand is, mm -hmm. you know, websites are important, social media is important. And you oh, guys yeah. are proof to that, right? Is it 100%. is it a, 
Is it a lot that you're getting traction? Oh, yet? yeah. So but the Internet, growing. you have to have a website. You have to have a Google My Business. Not only do you have to have a website, you have to have live chats on your website. Um, I get messaged um, on a live chat on our website. We have uh, Apple messaging on our website. We have Facebook messaging on our website. You can text us from our website. So, I mean, there's like four or five different options for you to contact us besides call, hitting the call button. Yeah. Um, you know, our social media is linked to everything. Our email addresses are linked to everything. Um, we learned early on, um, because of my mentor, the importance of having that online presence. Sorry, the Google reviews and- um, Is that a Google review going on right now? <laughs> <laughs> and um, just, you have to be present. People uh -huh. have to know who you are mm -hmm. um, and you have to be accessible. So yeah. those live chats, um, text messaging, any way a, cu a customer can reach you, Google My Business is really important to yep. have that um, established for them. So now let's talk about something I actually, I don't, I don't think I've ever brought this up on the show, is the IICRC. Yes. You guys, so not only are they a cleaning company, you guys, but they also got into the restoration world. Something I don't, I really know nothing about. We know of it, but mm -hmm. we don't offer it. So I'd actually like for you guys to share a little bit, like how, what made you think, I, th you, I know you were telling me mm -hmm. earlier, is what made you think about getting into that space? Especially because, <laughs> I know we said it, it's, it's a man's space oh, yeah. right now. Two sisters, young women, getting into the restoration space. How did that happen? So as I mentioned before, our father owns a mechanic shop. Um, so I was used to being around men, um, you know, auto parts, grease, and I, and I was comfortable so with it. So you know it. how to fix a car? <laughs> I know a little bit about <laughs> cars. If you tell me like what's wrong, I probably know, you know, yeah. <laughs> like four out of five. <laughs> um, but um, so I'm totally comfortable around being, you know, in a market full of men. But um, what happened was we were cleaning houses and we had a couple of people ask us if we would clean their carpets. Okay. Um, so I wanted to actually learn how to clean carpets. I didn't just want to go get a machine and, and ruin somebody's uh, carpet. So I found so the IICRC. So you didn't want to rely on YouTube like I did? Not for carpets, no. no. <laughs> I didn't want to um, have to use our new insurance policy. <laughs> um, didn't want the premium to go up. So we invested, I think it was like a $300 carpet class. Um, you know what? That's a lie. It was free. It was a free carpet class. And it was actually in my hometown. Mm -hmm. uh, so I took, it, they took the carpet class. Um, then I took an upholstery class with them. And the more classes I just started taking on to add on to our services for residential, um, I would listen to these guys talking and they were into biohazard cleaning, um, mold remediation, water damage, fire. And um, I would just hear them talk about the profit margins and all this crazy money. Um, and I was like, you know what, that sounds pretty interesting. And um, I started looking into it and pretty much it's like cleaning, but like extensively, yeah, like you're like, restoring a home. Mm -hmm. um, nothing sexy about no. that. that <laughs> no. no, nothing at all. <sighs> um, but I just like, I really like the conversation that was being had in these classes, the money talk clearly. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just started taking class after class and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go for my triple masters, which is, uh, it's like 16 or 17 courses. And um, oh, that's the program. Yeah. The triple masters is a program. Correct. Okay. Normally people pick one like master. So they're either like a tile and floor, uh, fire or water. Um, but because of COVID, they started um, having these classes online. So instead more of me, accessible. Right. Yeah. So instead of me having to drive out of state, spend five days to learn a class, now they were giving this on Zoom. So as soon as I saw that email come in, uh, online classes, I did great in college online classes. So I was like, this is I for me. This. I yeah, this. I can do this like nothing, right? Literally, I, I love to learn. What did you think? <laughs> what did you think about that? Like, what? wait, we just started cleaning. Now we're gonna get into restoration? I was actually excited. Right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, money excites me. Did you guys do, were you able to do this together? The so, courses or no? Oh, you were saying she's gonna no. do something. Yeah, I started so, them. Yeah, she yeah. did. She's already taken her second class. Um, but I was just going like full force while she was uh, running the business, the residential side of things. So that was another great reason for having her, you know, um, as a partner because Doing she Doing two allowed, things at once. Right, yeah. I started learning That's... something else while she was handling um, the residential cleaning. And yeah, it was really like the money, it was the motivation. And actually, so it's restoration science. Like, as I mentioned, I like to learn. Um, so each class was like really interesting to me. And um, so I went for my triple masters. Um, I completed it in like, I wanna say like in 10 months maybe. Um, 
I did our, our final class, which was um, applied structural drying. So we went into an actual flood house. They flooded the home. And, um, you know, you're kind of put to the test because all these classes, they build on each other. You yeah. start with like carpet, then upholstery, health and safety, odor, and then they just kind of tack on. So okay. um, if you take them in order, it's great. I didn't, but Hannah's taking them in order now. And um, so like when you get to that where they're flooding the, the home, like you have to have every other class before that. You got to put it all together. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. exactly. And what is the res like what is the result that you have to complete the entire service on your own? Yeah, well, so it was a group of people. Um, I was the only female there, um, which was really cool. But again, I'm used to yeah. being around men, um, being the only female in the room. And um, so I was kind of nervous because, you know, we're in a flood house and like everything I learned was like books, textbook. Yeah. I had no, no hands on, no hands on. All these guys work for serve master, serve pro. They've been in the field for like ever. They were just getting certified because the companies that they work for require it. Um, so they were coming there already. They already had oh, done yeah. some work. Like so tons this was, of work. This, you had done zero. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so man. I was super nervous going to this class. I kept telling Hannah, I was like, I don't know if it's going to be good. I was like, <laughs> I, these guys know what they're doing. I don't know. Um, so we showed up and it was just so awesome. They, they had an actual house. It was flooded. Uh, spent three days in Philadelphia. They taught us how to extract all the water, uh, read the humidity, the dew point. I mean, it freaked me out because it was a lot of science and yeah. I, it wasn't like great in science in school, <laughs> but um, it just clicked. Like I literally felt for like the first time ever in my life that I was meant to do something mm -hmm. like so much so that I was like in tears. I was yeah. standing there. I had to leave um, the school and I called Hannah and she was like, why are you crying? I'm like, Hannah, I'm like, was because confused. she was like, why are you crying? Minute, did you do happened? good or no? I was did like, you fail? I was like, no, I understand this. She's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I get it. I was like, I completely get everything that you're talking about. So everything that I learned, like it stuck with me, yeah. but I was so afraid from not actually being there and missing that hands-on experience yeah. that it would kind of just leave my head or not make sense. But it was awesome. It's definitely what the space that we want to get into. Um, so we're going to be getting into water damage. If you have a flood, uh, fire damage, if God forbid, you know, house catches on fire, a building mold remediation, which is one of the tougher classes, but so how uh, long have you been certified now and how many jobs have have you so done or you know? we, I have no jobs under my no belt. Jobs. Nope. Okay. And if anybody's looking for free help, <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to learn. Um, but um, so, no, I have no actual um, no jobs under my belt. I just finished my classes, I think, like a month and a half ago. Um, so now we're just getting our, you know, our legalities in line because um, this is two separate ent entities. Yeah, so we actually have three. So we have spotless cleaning, which is residential, Aralano Cleaning Services, which is commercial, and then Aralano Restoration. Damn, three. Which is you got three brands. <laughs> Third year in business, 3419, and they already got three companies. I thought I was a shit. <laughs> oh, no, you are, believe me. <laughs> so, <laughs> We're trying to get to where you guys are at uh, on the commercial is amazing. Um, there's just so much that can be done. There, it's, you know, we're talking facilities. Oh my I'm God. Like, so not again, I don't knock residential, but mm -hmm. you know, residential is you're there's limited. only so much you could do. Right. Not when you're out doing res restoration and stuff like that. Right. So that's a whole different ballgame. But on the commercial side, the service I can hear you guys already being able to offer and the passion that you guys have, you guys are learning, mm -hmm. right? Like there's so much more to learn too. And the opportunity to get out there and learn more is there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot to do in commercial side. Oh my right? God, like you so guys, much. you know, we talk about being a single source solution. I feel like that's the kind of direction you guys could go in because you got the family involved, mm -hmm. you got others that will help. You guys already said it. You guys remember that 19, she was running the business while Carolyn was going to learn and get certified. Like those are little tidbits mm -hmm. that, you know, people will say, well, you know, why do you share so much, Rick? And why, you know, why do you offer so much? It's because I can't take what they just, what you guys have, mm -hmm. you know, the dynamic that you guys have, that's proprietary, mm -hmm. right? You guys can compound on that. Nobody can take my family. Like, mm -hmm. It's my family. Like, right. That's why we're successful and we grow. But it's the 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 fact that you guys are taking risk and that you're learning together. Mm -hmm. Man, I mean, I again, not that I see the vision of where you guys are going, but I, I have an idea, mm -hmm. you know. What we would like to do or what I see for us um, as far as like Aralano Cleaning Services would be um, pretty much like what you and your family have going Um the facilities management, you know, doing the floors, doing the windows, changing the light bulbs. Um, we would also like to, you know, do that. And also, if it 
catches a you know catches fire god forbid or if there's growing mold you know we're, we also want to offer it. that that's exactly. the thing is you have that knowledge now like right it's just a matter of being in the right place at the right time to mm-hmm. offer it it's there i'm sure with you know ads and social media you guys are going to get yep. some jobs going right but right. You're, you're a month off or you're a month a month mm-hmm. and a half into it that's it's just so awesome because once you get a customer and I'm sure you know this, obviously, if you're in there cleaning their carpets or cleaning their office, you can always add something on. They're going to call you for it. Oh, yeah. You know, and 100 oh, percent. That's I always let them know like now, hey, we also do water. We do fire. If you have a flood or anything like that, we're here. Um, and we do also want to be like a one stop shop. Yeah. No, I mean, and that's where, uh, you know, people have heard us talk about it all the time where uh, you're the you don't always have to get out and get new sales. Mm-hmm. You've got sales in your backyard with the clients that you have that don't know that you do restoration. Right. They don't know that you do carpets. residential carpets, mm-hmm. floors. You have to tell them yep. over and over again. You know, that's our job. That's our job as a business owner. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I'm always, always trying selling. to upsell something. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're sales. We're always sales. <laughs> I'm like, hey, um, when's the last time you had these carpets done? Yeah. <laughs> that's the name of the game. Mm-hmm. So tell me, uh, and I'll start with you, is what, I mean, okay, I'm just... 19 years old this is i don't even know what i was doing when i was 19. uh what is a you know obviously you have your sister to look to, to as she's probably your mentor right i'm assuming is yeah who you look to for advice but what what's your desire and passion out of this opportunity that you have working with your sister being a business owner sure so um ever since i was like younger i always knew that i didn't want to work for someone else um and i guess graduating high school early i just knew that so you graduated high school early she did she did we left that out six months early (laughs) (laughs) yes (laughs) um yeah i mean it was just the fact that i knew that i couldn't work for someone else and i saw an opportunity and i took it yeah (laughs) and we've just been learning ever since trying to get more services cool well carolyn passion drive like what what is the purpose right now what where is where are you today that you see yourself in five from five years from now five years from now i see ourselves um our restoration business as well as our uh, commercial cleaning business um you know being much more larger you know than what they are i would love to you know have everybody know who we are in town and around um the tri-state area I would like to, you know, have a, an awesome setup like you guys do here at Rosalato. Um, and really, I mean, I know this is, it's like, but I want to be a millionaire. Right. <laughs> like, that's what the drive is. Like, I want to be a millionaire. I want to be a multimillionaire. Uh-huh. And would this be the first in your family? Yes, right. it would be. Mm-hmm. I'm also the first, I think I'm like the first college graduate also. Yep. Um, yep, me too. Cheers. Yep, that was, cheers. That was, that was the first one there too. <laughs> yep. Cheers. But um, I would like to be, yes, the first uh, millionaire in the family, along with Hannah. And um, like my father's business, um, I always saw a different vision for, than what he has now. Um, but I want this to be like a, fa- a big family business. I want to be able to leave this to my kids. Yeah, legacy. Um, a legacy, yeah. right. Um, I want to, I'm already thinking about my nephews working for us, and yeah. they're not even like four years old yet. That's but, awesome. I mean, we but that's how, that, I mean, to tell you, uh, that's very possible. Like mm-hmm. I, I talk oh, to I, know. I talk to these cleaning. Uh, you know, remember we were talking about earlier BSCs, right? Mm-hmm. When you get to the larger, larger level, a lot of people like to consider themselves a BSC, mm-hmm. a building service contractor. Uh, I remember I, I forgot I forget who it was, but this guy was fourth generation, and he was now the president and the CEO. Wow. Fourth generation meaning is you know four yeah. generations have been running this family cleaning business which is now a facility services firm, right? But I've got friends that are second gen, third gen. So this is very possible. Like the, oh, what, yeah. the industry we're in, you can leave it to your kids. You can leave it to your, you know, next, you yep. know, just generation of kids that come come up. Like we talked to, so we have two other sisters um, and I'm always talking to them. I'm like, listen, like. Oh, those are recruits right there. I'm like, I they, want you guys, you guys to get ready. know. You guys are, <laughs> You guys are working for Ariana. No. <laughs> I'm always telling them, like, I'm like, listen, um, like my sister, her kids are, like I said, like three, four years old, her boys. But I speak like I manifest these things. Like I tell her this isn't just about me and Hannah um, or my kids or, or Hannah. This is about all of us. Like I see this being 
where my nephews are going to uh you know benefit from this even my brother-in-law he has a job right now he has a good job but he knows that when it's time i'm gonna need him and he's and he's ready like he's ready like that's how much faith you know our family members some of them have in us but that's what the big picture is i don't want to just i don't want to be the only millionaire i want this to be generational wealth like nice. for the entire family i want to have everybody set um you know, so that they can live how they want and buy what they want and just so that everybody can, you know, reap the benefits of our hard work. Awesome. Well, guys, I like to end. I was actually going to end, but we talked about it earlier, was that bad moment. Oh, right. You guys talked about it, right? Hannah, did you have a moment that you were like, right. why the hell am I in this place? Why am I doing this? Yeah. Um, we used to clean for this warehouse, Menasha, and we were there till like, 5 a.m. and I just didn't want to be there <laughs> and I would get so upset but I mean we kept going and now yeah. <laughs> be there early, where early, we are. late late nights yeah it was late the late nights. nights and then like I guess kind of soonish whatever um due to my age people don't want to listen to me oh. like our employees <laughs> so it's really frustrating yeah. it makes I, me just I, not want to do I it could, I could see that yeah, yeah uh, they give what? a lot of our employees, uh, well, old employees, <laughs> up giving, you know, Hannah a bit of a hard time just because they don't want to take direction from somebody that's in their younger. teens. Yeah. Right. Well, I'll tell you, I got a newfound respect for the younger generation. Uh, not to get too into it, but the uh, I was part of an Amazon show where the whole goal of the show was having a teen on every team of CEOs that mm -hmm. we were, you know, it's an Amazon Prime show. It's going to be coming up in Can't two wait months. Can't wait to see it. Uh, but I had a 19 year old on my team. I mean, this kid looked like he was like 15, but <laughs> like I, you know, we heard some of his stories from Venezuela. He's, you know, he's, he, it, I can't say too much about it, but the first day he didn't say a word, quiet. So I was like, oh, you know, he's like, you know, I gotta help, I gotta nudge him, I gotta get him going, get him some energy. Second day comes in, this kid came in with a notebook had like one, two, three, four, five, said, all right, guys, I heard you guys all listen or speak. Now I need you guys to listen. This is how we're going to do it. We're going to be, so this guy's 52, this guy's 74. <laughs> She's been a business owner for 30 years. Like we're all CEOs mm -hmm. and here's this 19 year old kid who's graduating college this year and he's telling us what to do. So for a moment we were like, no, 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 no. We, you, don't, <laughs> you don't know what we know, but if you heard him and listened to him, and you took the age away, it didn't matter. Like right. this kid knew his shit. He knew what he was talking about. He was intelligent. He understood. He didn't overstep boundaries. He just laid it out. And next thing you know, he's doing the pitch for us. Like he's, like it That's was just awesome. amazing to know that young, the young generation has that much. You know, I say young because I'm 39. So like 19. Listen, we're still young too. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm young too. I'm young. I'm still young. younger. But the younger generation, like. Uh, Age, age shouldn't matter. No, it doesn't. It really shouldn't matter. You know, like as long as they have the drive and and like the want. Yeah. Like Hannah, she means business. Um, I could tell. She's I could tell she means she's business. a lot like our dad. <laughs> she means business. She deals with um, our employees. She trains them. I don't even. I'm too emotional. I like ask too many questions. And yeah. oh, how's your do dog? No, Hannah's like you get personal. Yeah, this I get is too a personal, personal business. Right. Yeah, like, I mean, it's it's it, it is what it is. You you get to know these people that work for you, and it's like they work with you. Mm -hmm. You know, and you do have to draw that line where, you know, at the end of the day, like my brother comes in for, as a CFO of our company, and he's like, Rick, it's black and white, man. You know, like if you don't perform, you gotta go. Then you gotta go. Yeah. But exactly. I'm like, there's still. <laughs> See, that's me. But bye. I mean, you, <laughs> there's, a, bye. there's a second chance. Like, no. uh, <laughs> see, that's what's happening. But that, right. she's Love definitely. It. Love it. But that's all, you need that, though. No, you need the yeah. dynamic. You need it. So what we'll do, because I'm already taking up too much more of your guys' time, is let's end with you guys being a family, sisters, women in this industry. What is something you would say to the audience that is out there? Because I, I, I'm, I'm hearing and I'm getting messages and I'm, I'm seeing a lot of women, especially mothers, that are want to get into this business and start their own company. What are some of the things you guys would say coming into this space, being you know women-owned business, young? Um, I would definitely say there is a market um, for cleaning, any kind of cleaning, residential, commercial, specialty. Um, you don't need a lot of money to start up. As I mentioned earlier, we started off at the dollar store and we were using brooms and dustpans. Um, as long as you work hard, you market yourself, 
always represent your business, whether it's flyers, business cards, um, just even if it's word of mouth, you can't afford, you know, business cards. We didn't have them for a while. Um, you can, it can be done. There's plenty of money to be made, but you just have to really be focused and be willing to put the work in. Um, and there's really no, like there is, it's not hard. It's not a hard, um, like niche to get into, right? Mm -hmm. You just have to know how to clean. You have to have the customer service side of things and you just have to have the cleaning supplies and, and the drive mm -hmm. and, you know, never think that you're not going to get far, um, within, you know, a, a short time frame. Hannah and I, we did really great within the first six months, but we put a lot of time in, you mm -hmm. know, we had those 3 a.m., 4 a.m. mornings, uh, took a, you know, went to sleep for four hours and then we were out cleaning again. Yep. Um, but there's plenty all, of it money. Almost, it becomes fun though. I gotta say. Oh, it was so much when fun. I, when me and my cousin, it was so and much my fun. My wife, like we had, we had a lot of laughter. Oh, I mean, we had a, a great time uh, just traveling. Yeah. So it's <laughs> up fun, and down. you guys. This industry is fun if you do it with the right people. Yep, absolutely. Hannah, as again, I gotta keep saying. I mean, I think the episode's gonna be, you know, nineteen year old here, uh, nineteen years old. It's it's possible to start. I know, I know in Definitely. your situation, you're lucky because you got Carolyn, who's a great leader, great mentor for you. Hundred percent. Older sister, right? Where it can be done though. Like share some advice to that generation that coming out of college. I know we both talked about Carolyn. Mm -hmm. Like coming out of high school, I shouldn't have gone to college because I didn't know what to do. Right. How do you entrepreneurship at such a young age? What do you what do you say about that? Sure. Um, so I believe. I'm a strong believer in baking until you make it. Mm -hmm. um, that's literally what we did in the beginning. But um, so we'll go back and look at some early. early <laughs> You're not going to see gloves, okay? <laughs> yeah, Please don't go that no far back. No proper PPE. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I feel like as long as you have drive, you can do whatever you set your mind to. And especially in this industry, you just have to really educate yourself on what you're going to do. And as long as you have the education, you can do it. Yeah. I mean, yep. that's YouTube. That builds confidence. Right. Confidence. Education builds confidence. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much. No, thank you for thank having, you for having us. us. Yeah. yeah, this is the best. We really appreciate we all so the knowledge. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we learned a ton. So we really appreciate you having us. And this is, So it was a good day. Oh, it was an amazing Definitely. day. Right. Awesome. <laughs> I learned awesome. so much. All right. Well, guys, thank you again for tuning in. I appreciate it. You'll get more information. If you guys don't mind, I'm going to be sharing all your information oh, in the description. Yeah, so you'll get all their contact info. If you guys want to reach out, you'll be able to reach out. If you guys don't mind, right? Of course not. <laughs> so again, until next time, <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in to Cleaning the Cocktails. Uh, more and more to come. Thank you. <laughs>